evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out tonight to join us in this pertinent discussion. The uh, topic for tonight's discussion slash debate is examining the war on drugs 40 years later. Is it worth the cost? Why or why not? And I do apologize for the warmness in here. You can feel free to go upstairs every once in a while if you need to get a breather or something. We are streaming it live upstairs as well. My name is Amanda Teresi and I'm president and co-founder of Liberty on the Rocks. We are a 501c3 nonpartisan social and educational organization that aims to unite, educate, and activate individuals interested in individual liberties, free markets, and a limited government. Now there are a lot of issues that are straight, cut and dry, anti-liberty, pro-liberty, but there are also some that have more of a gray area where people have a difficult time deciding where they stand. So tonight, that is one of those issues. So while Liberty on the Rocks does not take a stand on this particular issue, we do agree that it is extremely important to discuss and to learn more about. As, as all of you may know here, tonight marks the 40th anniversary of President Richard Nixon declaring the war on drugs. And while we've had some successes, we've also had some failures, and I think we can all agree that we still have some challenges ahead. So we, as a nation, need to think about those ideas and face them together. So that is why we are here tonight, and that is why we've brought such an exceptional panel to share with you their experiences and their knowledge on this important subject. Now, I also want to let you know that we are streaming this live to the internet on Denver Open Media, and we also are looking to poll the audience before and after the event, because we can do that with technology now, so that we can kind of see where where you guys are standing before and after and if this had any kind of uh, sway on your opinion or not, just kind of a fun thing to do. So in order to, te uh, to uh, let us know where you stand on the issue, is the war on drugs worth the cost, we would like you to text in either the word agree, disagree, or unsure to 64274. Kaylin's going to be handing out these little pieces of paper so you can remember. But it's 64274. You want to text agree, disagree, or unsure. Now, uh, we're going to hand these out. You're just going to, you're going to basically, you're going to, as you're sending a text, you're going to say, let's say, uh, agree. And then you're going to text it to the number 64274. Um, if you have questions, too, we can talk about that later. You can ask me, pull me aside. But we're also going to pull you at the end. So about 20 minutes after the Q&A, we'll let you know what was the consensus before and the consensus after. So I also, I do want to mention a uh, special thanks to the Drug Policy Alliance, who is sponsoring this event. Unlike Liberty on the Rocks, they do take a particular stance on this issue, and they're actually doing events across the country today to bring attention to the 40th anniversary. Um, but they did graciously agree to co-host this debate in concert with Liberty on the Rocks in order to bring this important discussion out to the floor and out to the people. So we really appreciate you being there, and we also ask that you please be respectful to our guests. Now, um, I do also want to introduce to you briefly uh, uh, Art Way, who is the Colorado manager of the Drug Policy Alliance, so that he can just talk to you briefly about what they're all about and what their mission is. But other than that, uh, we will do Q&A as soon as the event is over. So thank you all once again for coming tonight, and uh, please enjoy the debate. Thank you, Amanda. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Um, real quick, the short and sweet of it is the Drug Policy Alliance believes in drug policy based on science, compassion, health, and human rights. So let's get on with the night. When it comes to freedom in a modern democracy, what we're talking about is individual liberty. I'm sure I don't have to tell you all that. I'm kind of speaking to the crowd there. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept. This concept is also the hardcore principle of the Drug Policy Alliance. Um, at our most fundamental, we believe in individual sovereignty of the mind and the body. We believe that absent harm, what you choose to put in your body in and of itself, per se, is not a crime. So how does this work out in the system that we have today? I've been told to grab the mic, excuse me. So how does this work, is that better? Much better. How does this work out in the system that we have today? Basically, mere possession of a drug should not be a crime. It definitely should not be a felony. I'm talking about small possession, of course. It should definitely not be a felony leading to the mandatory feeding of the beast that is the prison industrial complex. We fed this beast too much. We're starting to put him on a diet. That's why we're here tonight. Um, and so that's our overall mission is to shrink the criminal justice system to a proportion that is beneficial for public health and safety. 
When we talk about the most expansive loss of liberty and individual freedom in, in the post-civil rights era in this country, we're talking about the war on drugs and its companion mass incarceration. Due to the war on drugs, our Fourth Amendment right is a former shell of what it used to be. Of course, an argument can be made that for poor people, especially poor people of color, they never had much of a Fourth Amendment right in the first place. But due to the war on drugs, this reality is now being codified under such legal phrases as high crime area and uh, high drug traffic areas. Our Supreme Court has given law enforcement and prosecutors a legal blank check and unfettered discretion to wage a prohibition style war against drug use. Of course, I guess we're doing this because the first time we did prohibition that worked out so well. <laughs> then it was Al Capone and Dutch Schultz now Pablo Escobar and Scarface and so on. I know Scarface is fictional, but I think you get the point. Our government must know that prohibition begets violence and the underground market operating at $300 billion a year globally is the, glo is the drug trade. Our government must also know that the legislation of appetite is near futile. So why engage in such a costly campaign against something you know you cannot totally eradicate from society. Something that has been a part of our society from day one. There's a lot of reasons people can come up with to answer that question. Maybe job security for those on in the, within the executive branch is one reason. But I'm also willing to go out on a sort of radical limb and say our government chooses to wage a war on drug use due to the maintenance of power and the continuation of an underclass that historically within uh, our society and European society in general is there to benefit the ruling class in some, in, in some way or another. I'm sure our federal government can invest $70 billion along with local state governments that they spend a year into something else or allow the people who earn that money to keep that money. But that doesn't allow for the control and maintenance of the populace that the war on drugs allows for. As you sit here and listen to stories of crime, I'm sure you're going to hear that, stories of fiscal irresponsibility, I ask you to always keep in mind that in a modern democracy, once again, we're talking about individual liberty. Freedom of the masses to control their bodies and mind. Freedom of the masses not to be duped into paying, and paying for and supporting a war on drug use with the prison industrial complex as the primary doorway to treatment. What's needed is an approach that realizes that prohibition as well as addiction is costly, if not more. We need to restructure our resources from incarceration to a science-based public health approach to deal with drug use. This is not rocket science, especially once we peel away the last 40 years of propaganda from our mental paradigms. Once again, I thank you all for coming and please enjoy tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew McCullough. I want to thank you all for being here. I am the executive producer of tonight's program. I just want to take a real quick second to speak about Denver Open Media. That's where we're shooting tonight. And Amanda and I, on behalf of Liberty on the Rocks, want to thank Denver Open Media for all their assistance. Just so you guys know a little bit about Denver Open Media, it is a community resource that nonprofits and small community activists, organizers all across Denver have as a resource and a tool to make high quality productions such as this. So without Denver Open Media, tonight's event wouldn't be possible. We want to uh, give a very gracious thank you out to them. And of course, a thank you all for being here in our audience and those of you watching at home.